Hello and welcome back to Wine Reform. So over the summer, I had the awesome opportunity to go to the Palmer Lake Wine Festival. And that event was all outside. It was tent to tent to tent, full of Colorado-based wineries, um, meateries, cider makers, and sake makers. And there was just so much, you know, fermented beverage flown around. And it was all really good, and it was all made by people based in Colorado, which made it even more special. So needless to say, I did find quite a few producers who I am now a huge fan of in all of those sectors. Um, however, we're only gonna be focusing on one today. So before we get going, I wanna go ahead and break down um, a couple different terms and maybe reintroduce something in order to put something new into context. So I wanted to talk about the difference between estate, a winery, and vineyard, and now the lesser known term, micro winery. So to put it simply, the vineyard is the plot of land where those grapes are grown. The winery is that beautiful, magical place where the grapes get turned into our favorite beverage, the wine, and the estate kind of encompasses both. So um, the winery will be sourcing grapes from what is grown on that land owned by the estate. So those three terms are a lot more common um, when you're just perusing the internet, looking at bottles of wine. However, micro winery is not as common. So just like there are micro breweries, <laughs> micro wineries operate at a very similar scale. Uh, basically to qualify as a micro winery, uh, the business has to produce less than 10,000 cases of wine per year. And they are typically making this wine in like six gallon batches or um, or smaller, typically six gallons is the norm. So since the operation is so small, um, most of the time a micro winery will go ahead and source their grapes from elsewhere. They don't produce their own grapes. Um, so they can pick and choose from pretty much just about anywhere. They can find supply and they will choose based on what kind of wine they're trying to achieve. So today the micro winery we will be uh, focusing on is the wine barrel. You can see it, there you go, from Parker, Colorado. So the wine from the wine barrel we will be opening today is their 20 Mile Red, which is what they have called their Tempranillo. Um, I enjoyed their wines, so I thought it'd be fun to crack this one open. I will admit I wanted to open this one in October because it's orange. So their 20 Mile Red, which is their Tempranillo, has won a silver medal at the San Francisco International Wine Competition. Unfortunately, I couldn't verify which year it won that medal um, because the San Francisco International Wine Competition does not have an archive up of, you know, winners for various categories. Um, however, I want to believe them because they were very nice. <laughs> There is no vintage listed on this bottle, so um, it's not uncommon to see some wines without a vintage. I mean, if you've ever had champagne, champagne does not have a vintage. They pick and choose to make a good product, so that's probably what they did here. Um, we'll have to see when we taste it. And I have no idea where they got the Tempranillo from, um, because they don't say, they say that they get their grapes from all around the world and they didn't tell me exactly where those grapes came from. So we'll just have to guess. So for a quick rundown on Tempranillo, it is a Spanish grape. Um, it is a red grape. It has very high tannins um, and it makes very full bodied reds, similar to um, the feeling of a Sangiovese or a Cabernet Sauvignon. The characteristics of Tempranillo can range from strawberry and cherry to blackcurrant and prune and tend to have some notes of leather and tobacco, um, which I always associate with Spanish wines, leather and tobacco, but that's another, that's another aside. <clears throat> Anywho, Tempranillo is grown in a lot of regions um, in both Spain and Portugal, as well as places in South America and unexpectedly parts of the US like Texas. So that's cool. Also, Tempranillo translates to little early one because it ripens earlier in the season than the other grapes that it 
will grow around. So I thought that was very cute. Anywho, I am just very excited because I love Tempranillo. I have a soft spot in my heart for Spanish wines. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm very excited to get this open and, you know, just see what we can pick out from it. Um, I did enjoy a lot of their wines. The people uh, at the Wine Barrels booth were very friendly, very nice. And so I'm excited. It is definitely different than what we typically do on this channel because we are lacking um, information on both vintage and region. Um, However, it should still be fun. So why don't we go ahead and crack it open and get going? All right, so we have got it open. Our 20 mile red from the wine barrel. Again, no vintage, no region, but we know from the website and from talking to the wine barrel themselves that this is Tempranillo. So let's go ahead and give it a pour. All right, so if you've been here before, then you know the process. However, if you're new, welcome, then we are just gonna go ahead and go through our evaluation steps, starting with evaluating the appearance. All right, so appearance. This wine has got kind of a garnet color. It looks like it has a medium intensity and the clarity is fantastic. So I think it's very pretty. It looks like what someone would picture when someone says red wine. Alrighty, appearance aside, now we get to go ahead and evaluate the nose, uh, which means we're gonna sniff it and see what we can pick out. So let's put our nose in this glass. It sounds weird, but it's what we do. <clears throat> Okay, so she's fruity. I definitely smelled strawberry, sour cherry, um, something that I perceived as candied cranberry. Um, and then I got shoe polish and a hint, like a hint of that leather and tobacco is very faint. So it's definitely young. Uh, the intensity of the nose was also medium because I held it, I held it here and I could smell it, but if I held it down here, I couldn't really smell it. So medium intensity on that nose. All right. So now we get to do everyone's favorite part. We are gonna go ahead and sip it. This is also known as evaluating the palate if you want to tell people you're being fancy. So, cheers. All right, so first of all, everything I smelled, I could taste, that is great. Second of all, the thing that surprised me the most is that the tannin felt very light. Honestly, when I sipped it, it felt more like a Pinot Noir on my tongue than a Tempranillo, which is strange to me, but not unwelcome. The acidity was high, the alcohol was high, it felt very balanced. Um, the finish was medium, I will say that. But something else that kind of intrigued me is that even though I could tell it was definitely not off dry, it didn't feel completely dry either. So I would, I would kind of put it in between dry and off dry, but closer to dry, only because I did taste a bit of residual sugar on my tongue. So that was very interesting. But all in all, it was pleasant, it was drinkable. I did quite appreciate it. Um, I think especially for someone who is maybe not into a heavy red, they would appreciate the wine barrels Tempranillo. I do have a feeling that they sourced their grapes from somewhere a little cooler, so perhaps Chile uh, or Argentina. I can imagine sourcing some grapes from there, but again, I'm really intrigued at how it's a Tempranillo, but it's not what I would picture for a classic Tempranillo. Yeah, in terms of pairings, I want this with uh, meat pies, maybe just because it's fall. I definitely want this with steak and potatoes. I want this with burger and fries. Um, ooh, if you've ever had like a mushroom burger, those are so good. This with anything with mushrooms, like a mushroom burger and fries and just, oh my God, that'd be so good. So I'm picturing comfort food, very warm comfort food. I can definitely put this with, but uh, I enjoyed it. Not what I expected, but I enjoyed it. So thank you for joining me for this episode of Wine Reform. As always, it is a pleasure to get to interact with you guys in the comments. I really do appreciate hearing everyone's uh, wine preferences and perspectives. It never gets old. I think it's truly wonderful. So thank you. Uh, I will be back again in two weeks, but before I go, I do have one question. What is your favorite season? 
It's an age-old question, but I gotta know. Um, mostly because this was a summer experience that I had and I carried it with me into fall, so it's like spanning seasons and it's just, I gotta know, what is your favorite season? And I will leave you with that. And with that being said, I will see you guys again in two weeks. Bye-bye.